Learning Webflow might be one of the most useful things that I've done to grow as a designer. A lot of people seem to contest that learning Webflow is no longer relevant, especially with the advent of newer tools like Framer that have a lot of the same functionality as Webflow, but without the steep learning curve. But even with those newer tools like Framer, I still think it's important to learn Webflow. And in this video, I'm going to be covering three big reasons to do so. And I'll also share the strategy and method that I used to learn Webflow later on. The first reason to learn Webflow might seem unnecessary as a designer, but I have found it to be very useful, and that is that it teaches you how to code. So you learn the structure of web pages and how they're built with HTML and CSS. Prior to learning Webflow, I felt like I had just sort of free reign to design whatever I wanted on the canvas, and then the developer would just magically be able to make that appear. And obviously that is not the case. And so by learning Webflow and, and learning the foundations of HTML and CSS, I have a better grasp on what's possible. And the other benefit is that by learning Webflow and those HTML and CSS foundations, I feel like I can speak the language of a developer better. So instead of talking about Figma's auto layout, I can use the terminology of Flexbox, or if I want to talk about how something is positioned on a web page, I can use terms like, hey, I want that to be a sticky positioning, or I want that to be a fixed positioning. And so I think by learning the vocabulary of a developer better, I can just have better communication with them on what I'm thinking and being able to articulate my design decisions and just overall just have more efficient collaboration. The second reason to learn Webflow goes hand in hand with the first reason, and that is that it teaches you how to design with practicality in mind. Because you are essentially learning how to visually develop within Webflow, you learn what is possible and what's not really possible. And so now when I'm mocking up designs in Figma, I have a better idea that with whatever project that I'm working on and the designs that I create, I have a better idea in my mind, is that actually something that is gonna be possible to develop or is it something that is not gonna be really feasible? And so that just makes the developer's life easier because if I develop something in Figma that I need to hand off to the developer, I can already sort of screen in my mind whether or not the design that I created is something that is likely to be able to be developed or not. The last reason to learn Webflow is something I often overlooked as a designer, and that is responsiveness. So by learning Webflow, you learn the ins and outs on how to make designs responsive, because by default, Webflow has four breakpoints. You have desktop, tablet, uh, mobile landscape, and then mobile portrait. And so if you don't optimize for each of those screen sizes, the design isn't going to look good, it's not gonna be fully responsive. And before I learned Webflow, I found that as a designer, I in past projects, I made desktop versions and then I made mobile versions, but I wouldn't make anything in between. And so that leaves a lot of ambiguity and that ambiguity is now slack that the developer has to pick up. They have to essentially do our work for us to figure out the ambiguity that we have not articulated to them. And so by learning how to design for each of these four breakpoints, I have found what fonts tend to work better at each of those screen sizes, what spacing tends to work better, and by doing that and by filling in those gaps, I'm able to make the developer's job easier. While there are a lot of benefits to learning Webflow, the biggest downside is that it can be a pretty steep learning curve. And so that can dissuade a lot of people from wanting to learn it. But I've actually found it pretty fun to learn. And so the way that I learned Webflow is I first started with Webflow University. So Webflow University is a series of courses produced by Webflow. And I'm gonna tell you, these are jaw-droppingly well-produced courses that honestly, they could charge money for them and they would be worth the money. They're incredibly well done. And so what I did is I took Webflow 101 and that is the entry level course to Webflow where you learn just the ins and outs on how Webflow even works. And you build out this sort of mini web page taking, uh, utilizing some of the functionality of Webflow. 
So that was a really good way to get started. And then from there, I went and took their freelancers journey, I think is what it's called. It is, it teaches you not only how to use Webflow, but also just how to be a freelancer. Like how do you find clients? How do you pitch to clients? How do you sort of find your niche and, and package your product into something that you can sell? And then from there, it goes into a more advanced CMS-driven website where you learn a lot of the more advanced features of Webflow. And so I thought that that was a really good follow-up course to the Webflow 101. After I took the Webflow University courses, I still felt like I wanted more. Now, truth be told, I probably could have just continued to get better by just putting in the reps, but I kind of wanted that hand-holding nature of a course so that I don't develop any bad habits and that I can learn sort of best practices for using Webflow. So I stumbled upon Flux Academy's Webflow Masterclass and that is what I ended up doing next to further my Webflow learning. And that to me overall was worth it because within that course, I developed three web pages from scratch. And so that course basically allowed me to put in the reps time and time again to learn all of the different tools that Webflow has to offer. And the thing that I really like about the course is that it goes over not only how to use Webflow, but it does go through a lot of the advanced features of Webflow and how to make websites that are just very modern with complex layouts and complex animations. So I thought that that was a really good next step just to really lock in my understanding of Webflow. I don't necessarily consider myself a pro by any means, but I definitely feel a lot more competent after taking that Flux Academy Webflow Masterclass uh, than I did prior. I actually did a full review of the Flux Academy Webflow Masterclass, so if you're interested, you can check that out here. Be sure to subscribe if you found this video to be useful. It would help me out a lot. Join my Discord group, Designers Den, if you want to connect with a cool community of like-minded designers, and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.